Uh, we are here because history is repeating itself in the United States. Uh, in the past 12 months, past year, we've seen more states pass more laws pushing more citizens out of the ballot box than at any point, any year uh, in the past century. Uh, those, those laws, the poll taxes, the, uh, grand, the um, literacy tests and so forth uh, that people like Meg Revers and other activists, Cheney Goodman and Schwerner, were all assassinated fighting to overturn uh, in the 19, early 1960s were put in place, in other words, a half century or more before that. Um, we have a pattern in our country, a historical pattern, that whenever the vote is significantly expanded, particularly for black people, it is followed by a massive attempt to contract the vote. So the, the Civil War happens in 1860s and the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution is passed, giving all blacks the right to vote. And what begins uh, within months of its passage and continues for almost 40 years there, thereafter uh, is state after state introducing restriction after restriction, suppressing the black vote. One of the first actually was the state of New York, which had opposed slavery. It was going to be a very liberal, progressive state at the time but also had one of the largest free black populations. And they opposed the 15th, uh, 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 they opposed the 15th saying, in effect, we already give a lot of black folks the right to vote. We don't want to let all of them vote. We give pr black property owners the right to vote. We don't want all blacks to vote. And so when the 15th was passed over New York State's objection, they went right into their state capital in Albany and pushed through what was one of the first bans of formerly incarcerated people voting after the Civil War, and they said they were doing it explicitly to suppress the black vote. We are now as we were then. We are a country in which um, uh, the actual enforcement patterns uh, in our criminal justice system are very much influenced by race. Take, for instance, uh, the usage of crack cocaine. Uh, crack cocaine, powder cocaine, uh, pot, one of the sort of interesting things that people in our country is regardless of race, they're as likely to use it. So whites are about two-thirds of the population and about two-thirds of the crack cocaine users. Blacks are about 12 to 15 percent of the population and about 12 to 15 percent in a given year of the crack cocaine users. But blacks average about 85 percent of the people who are actually locked up for use level quantities of crack. And whites are five percent. So when they went in there saying we're seeking a ban on formerly incarcerated people voting, it explicitly said in the legislative history to suppress the black vote. They were tying uh, this attempt to suppress the black vote to, uh, if you will, a racist pattern of law enforcement. It still works today. In Virginia, in 1906, towards the end of this wave that followed the Civil War, they actually put it into the state constitution. They said quite plainly, a delegate who voted for it and was advocating for it at that constitutional convention in the state of Virginia, because of this plan, the darkie will be eliminated as a factor in our state's politics within five years. It's still on the books today. You'll hear soon from, Kim, from Kemba smith Pradia, who's moving back to Virginia, formerly incarcerated, and will lose her right to vote when she moves back to Virginia. Then you fast forward, 1965, the Voting Rights Act is, is passed, and similarly you see massive attempts at voter suppression. Then you fast forward, 2008, we see the color barrier at the White House fall. First president of color ever in over 200 years of history of the U.S. of A. Elected by the largest, most diverse set of voters, in U.S. history. For the first time, black women actually vote at a higher frequency than white men. And what comes after it? The biggest wave of voter suppression laws passed in a single year across the country that we've seen since before the NAACP was created 103 years ago. These laws attempted in, in three dozen states, passed last year in 14 states. There have been more passed since. 25 laws passed last year, uh, make it harder for about 5 million people in our country to vote. 
They come in sort of three sets. One are these so-called voter ID laws, which are confusing to people from many countries because many countries you have a national ID. Many countries sign you up to vote when you get your national ID. Our country, we don't have a national ID. You have to go out and get your ID. You can actually be born in our country, in some rural areas, to a midwife and not even receive a birth certificate. Then you actually have to go out and register to vote. And so these voter ID bills actually put in place the first literacy and financial barriers to voting since we got rid of the literacy tests and the poll tax. Uh, we've seen a longtime member of the NAACP in rural South Carolina, Dr. Brenda Williams, spend hundreds of her hours, she's a medical doctor, hundreds of her hours, thousands of her dollars, assisting her medical patients in establishing their identity, getting their identification papers so that they can vote. So rural black people that nobody questions where they were born. They say one word, you know they are from rural South Carolina and nowhere else. But literally now, this doctor is spending thousands of dollars uh, uh, making it possible for people to vote. Simply put, if you're too poor to own a car, you tend not to have a driver's license in our country. If you move frequently, that driver's license tends to be out of date. And uh, if you rent um, or you're a student, same thing. The next set is bans on Sunday voting, early voting, same day uh, re registration. And then, of course, you have these notoriously racist bans on formerly incarcerated voting. What, what each of these have in common is that they have the effect of suppressing the black vote. When you make voter registration more difficult, for instance, by requiring people, as the state of Georgia has done this year, to actually attach a copy of their ID to the voter registration form, which makes it virtually impossible to have a voter registration drive because you can't go door to door pushing a copier with you. Um, well, 20% of blacks get signed up that way, but only 6% of whites. So it has a disproportionate racial impact. And in a country where, for instance, the presidency is decided by 8% of the vote, you basically have 46% of the people who vote Republican, 46% who will always vote Democrat, and 8% in the middle who the two parties fight over. And you may have 60 million ballots cast, blocking, making it harder for 5 million people to vote in states that add up to 178 of the electoral college votes needed to become president, and you only need 270, is a very big deal. Thank you.